Hello and welcome to a Citizen Digital exclusive. And today we have Samantha Kipuri, who is the founder and group head of strategy and media at Densu Kenya. Welcome. Thank you. We also have Joel Rao, who is the CEO of digital services at Densu Kenya. Now, I'm very excited about this conversation that we're going to have because right now, People are grappling, and organizations specifically, are grappling with the issue of digital transformation. So you're just going to unpack for us how we can make sure we make the most out of digital transformation. Now, and I think one of the best ways to start this conversation is based on a data-driven report that you released, Densu released um, earlier this uh, last month, the end of last, last month, month, right? Yeah. Uh, and it was dubbed M1. Mm -hmm. Now, people are wondering, what is M1 about? Uh, it's really data-driven, but we want to understand what more is it about. And I think I'll direct that question to you, Samantha. Tell us a little bit more about what M1 is and what was the, the need, what decided, what was the decision-making factor that decided you need to make this M1? Yeah. Great question, Claire. So um, we actually launched M1 for the first time in 2018. And we as an agency invested our own money and went ahead and did a face-to-face -face survey countrywide. And the reason behind that is while we do have data in the advertising industry and compared to other markets, really great data, where we felt there was a pretty big gap was around not just understanding people from a demographic perspective. So Claire, knowing your age, which I won't mention. Um, <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> we could know your age. We could know your income. Mm -hmm. We know, of course, your gender. So all the demographic you know, aspects towards Kenyans, the information is available. But in terms of what makes Claire tick, what keeps you up at night, what influences your decision making, uh, why you choose the products you choose, how you go about you know, deciding what to wear in the morning, that kind of information just didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And our clients very much do need that information. Any business anywhere needs that information because if you're going to create products that really connect with people, then people are going to use often. If you're going to create campaigns that live beyond a product life cycle, um, if you're going to have authentic, authentic relationships with your consumers, you need to understand them. So rather than sit around and wait, <laughs> we took our own money, we invested in the study and rolled it out in 2018. Now, uh, our initial plan was to roll it out every two years, but like, you know, COVID happened in 2020, so we had to, you know, hold that back for a little bit. But now we actually managed to go ahead, go into the field, expand our study, and we actually measured about 3,000 Kenyans uh, from all walks of life to really understand exactly what I just said, psychographics, behavior, and decision making, as well as, of course, media consumption, why they consume what they consume. So I think that's pretty much um, a summary of M1 and how it came about. And really, there's no other study like it. So um, the reception was great. I mean, we <laughs> I think we underestimated how much interest there would be in the product. Uh, but like we said, we saw this happen 2018, we went for it. And now all we've done is just enhance that study further. We've added topics like um, sustainability, um, just st stuff around, you know, climate change, um, really taking into account not just how media impacts the environment, but just the relationship with people and products that really do create an impact in the world that we live in. So just impact. Um, cases. We've included, we've expanded industry. So I think before we just focused largely on, you know, the bigger industries, for example, finance and FMCG. Mm. We've really expanded that to include um, SME mm. um, at a very granular level, which wasn't done before. Uh, from a consumer perspective, and after this I'll hand over to Joel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from a consumer perspective, again in 2018, we focused much more on urban audiences. Mm. But this time we have a 60-40 split between urban and, and rural, rural because we do mm. know that I mean of course mm. um, audiences in rural areas actually command pretty high um, consumption yeah high consumption mm. of all the products and services that um, businesses create okay so that's mm. pretty much it okay mm. thank you thank you for that detailed uh, explanation and mm. Joel maybe you can chime in she's really explained very well what the study included but what mm. are other snippets that uh, people should be aware of from the study what was really interesting about this particular study was you know Samantha rightfully you know set it out 
to be um, it went beyond the demographics and focused really on the psychographics aspect of it. So just allow me to paint a slightly clearer picture of what this would mean to uh, you know, the normal Mwanainchi out there who's running their own SME or they're involved in, in, in such organizations. More often than not, whenever we get data sets uh, you know, from different players within the market, um, especially around the Wanjiko, the Mwanainchi, um, we would get you know, their age, gender, you know, where they stay, income level, and so on and so forth. Um, and one of the things that we have seen is that when it comes to the actual decision making, unless you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to understand why they make the decisions they do, it's really hard to, you know, sort of, you know, figure that out. And a lot of organizations have had a lot of uh, issues forecasting, you know, what that output would look like. So what we decided to do is to go down into the ground and really understand the representation of the of the population, um, as Samantha put it, and we started seeing why consumers would make the decisions they would make. So if, for example, uh, you know, you know, you're dressed up, you know, really well, you know where you shop. Um, if I was to take a consumer who is um, a woman who uh, is aged, um, you know, 25, uh, living in Langata right now, um, is obviously a heavy consumer of social media. She's constantly on WhatsApp. Uh, she's probably getting entertained on YouTube and TikTok, mm, catches up with friends on Facebook and Instagram. It, it, you can begin to see that that consumer is already connected right and data has now become a need that they have you know for example um you have a similar consumer who doesn't stay far from langata just down the road in south b or south c which is closer i guess um same uh demographic target consumer more or less in within the same income level having the same consumption habits However, when it comes to decision making around what they're going to dress up, there are certain things that will influence their decisions. So, you know, which media personality would influence or which celebrity would influence the way they dress up? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the one in Langata would be very different from the one in, 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 in South Sea, yet they are within the same demographic profile uh, setting. And so what we decided to do was to really understand what this is. And we eventually found buckets, psychographic buckets, that we can be able to you know, sort of tie them with the golden thread that exists within those buckets. Um, and so we, we found out, for example, you know, um, you know for an example, of, uh, in this instance, you know, we have some of those women saying like, oh, you know, I'd actually prefer going to shop at Elsie Waikiki. You know, it's fashionable. I've seen my favorite influencer, fashion uh, influencer, content creator, you know, giving me tips on why I should be shopping at Elsie Waikiki. And then someone else will say like, you know, probably the one living in, in, in South Sea, and I'm not saying that that, that happened, it's just an example. Um, you know, they want to shop on a budget and they still want to look glamorous mm -hmm. and they still want to be on the gram. Um, and so you have, you know, a different experience where they will say like, I actually prefer shopping at toy market, for example, because, you know, there's, you know, variety at cost. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that element to it. Um, and so that's just an example of, of, of how we would actually bring it to life because decision making is very, very different mm -hmm. and, and consumers, are especially Kenyans, we are very peculiar people. Um, and so the way we would think in a boardroom um, that this is how decisions are being made, unless you go to the ground and see what exactly is happening, it's going to be very difficult to actually understand that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's very important what you said. I mean, uh, Kenyans are peculiar and what you think may not be actually what's on the ground. And that even goes for the media. It's about audience-led, people-led. You know, what you think your readers want is maybe not what they really want. So that's right. why we need data to really uh, decide 
what we're going to do. Now, I'd like us to talk a little bit about um, SMEs grappling with digital transformation. We are in the digital age and we cannot ignore it. What can you tell that SME that's grappling with this digital transformation? How can they go about it? Some tips, mm. some very practical tips, Samantha. I think for SMEs especially, they're really, I mean, I think, I think they do know the power that they have in this mm. country, mm. but I think it's just to own that mm. because I think that just, you know, over time they sort of leave or, you know, this thing of ours has always worked. Mm. Mm. Let's just this is continue. how we've been doing things. You know, and yeah. they're doing incredibly well. Yeah. You know, they're what, 60% of our yeah. economy? Mm. They're doing exceptionally well. Yeah. But I think to own that power and to realize that actually, they're actually our future mm. SMEs is to just say, because we've done it this way so far, doesn't mean that this is going to work forever. Yeah. And to just really take this opportunity and run with it. Mm. Don't let fear come yeah. and stand in between yeah. you and just really really massive growth don't leave it to the big corporates and blue chip companies from the western world mm. we can do it mm. so yeah i almost always want to speak to the stakeholders within the sme environment and tell them you, you need to sort of zoom out of the situation that you feel you need to do as far as this digital transformation agenda is concerned one thing that i always tell them is first and foremost Technology is a, is a tool. Mm. It's meant to accelerate mm. you to the next level of growth that you are meant to be in. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it from that perspective, whether it's from a marketing perspective, whether it's operations, whether it's in, um, in driving efficiencies mm -hmm. within your business, technology can do that and all that is digital transformation mm. and so what we really need to almost always you know bring to the table is tell uh, you know stakeholders within the SME space once you've analyzed as she said you know you have that inward look and see what you can what technology can actually help you mm. solve make you more efficient save costs mm. um, um, you know, grow profits, inc have a better customer experience, mm -hmm. um, then it becomes a different, you know, ball game. You know, we have SMEs who have always operated on email mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's their thing. And, you know, we will send SMS blasts to all our, our customers. Yeah. But even from our data, we've realized, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 63% of, of, of uh, urban uh, population aged between 18 to 45 mm -hmm. uh, don't really pay attention to promotional messages nowadays yeah, yeah. and organizations are busy pumping in quite a lot yeah. of uh, 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 you know and the telcos haven't helped because you know you're receiving messages every <laughs> other time yeah. um, and then you are also there and you're just crowding the consumers you know space yeah. and you know you should ask yourself like is this really what our consumer experience should be. Is there a better way mm. to, to engage them? Is there a better way to reward them, mm. you know, at the end of the day? Yeah. Um, and, and these are some of those pertinent questions that I think we need to start having, mm. uh, you know, within our, our organizations, within the meeting rooms and boardrooms that we are having these conversations. Um, and so when it comes to, you know, driving that transformational agenda, um, I strongly, strongly believe that as a country, we do have the capability to be able to actually drive 100%. it, 100%. What you both said is very important. There's so much power that SMEs really possess. It's just unlocking that power and the why. Why are you That's doing it? You're, you're doing it because everyone is there. You need to really understand the why. Mm. So that's just powerful. Now, I'd like us to talk a little bit about the ADWIC event that happened mm. uh, some time back. Um, it's a big publication mm -hmm. uh, in the marketing space. Tell us a little bit you won an award and mm. we'll talk a little bit about mm. that <laughs> congratulations <laughs> to you yeah. uh, just tell us a little bit about what the event uh, entailed uh, you are a, a keynote, keynote speaker, speaker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah good job on that yeah. as well just tell us a little bit about the event and what uh, where is Kenya mm. on the map mm. tell us mm. well so for starters this was the first ad week what for me what was really positive was first and foremost, the melting point of culture that then influences the, the, influences the way consumers perceive brands, that then allows you to be able to then come up with 
you know, creative ways of engaging consumers from a cultural lens. Mm -hmm. What was quite, you know, imp powerful mm -hmm. was the fact that the deliberate effort mm -hmm. that brands around the world and on the continent uh, have towards creating quality comms comms that are data driven, mm -hmm. um, comms that tap into culture, yeah. um, that recognize the power of the content creator and the creative economy in general, that then brings impact not just to the bottom line of the company but actually impact to society in general. And there are so many cases mm -hmm. uh, that were presented. Um, and so as a keynote speaker, one of the things that um, first and foremost proud to be a Kenyan talking okay. about <laughs> uh, I think we were two Kenyans mm -hmm. three Kenyans including yourself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who were featured um, on stage um, and I think one, one of the things that was quite powerful was when it comes to culture mm -hmm. as a people yes you know Kenyans are peculiar people uh, but you know, even the Tanzanians see themselves as a peculiar mm. people. You understand? Yeah. And we are peculiar in our own borders, quote unquote, yeah. but we do have a golden thread that ties each and every uh, uh, cultural aspect within, you know, within the continent. Mm. And for me, what was really interesting was, you know, first and foremost, the power of of entertainers and the power of entertainment mm -hmm. uh, and if you see what Africa has been able to export mm. to the world entertainment has been you know right at the top um, and then over and above that then you look at the power of, 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 of content creation and storytelling coming to life in that sense um, and so for, for, from my perspective you know we were talking a lot about that and how uh, you know, influencer marketing, for example, has grown massively. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, during Adweek, we did actually announce that, uh, you know, we've actually partnered with, uh, you know, content creators mm -hmm. um, around the continent to, to look at culture from their lens because mm -hmm. they are culture shapers, they are culture creators. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to tap into that to be able to actually advise our brands in a much better way to be able to, uh, you know, serve. Uh, not just their bottom line, but also serve communities to do to do good. At Densu, one of the mantras that we stand for is actually we we create brands, we 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 form brands that actually end up doing good in society. We, we are a force for good. We do recognize ourselves as a force for good, and we are, we pride ourselves in that. Mm. And so, from that perspective, yeah, having that spotlight, it was really really important to just showcase what as Kenyan we've been able to do, uh, you know, with some of the brands that we've been able to work with, um, or, you know, over the last couple of years, you know, Safaricom, uh, Absa, and so on and so forth. And I think it's important for us to be able to, uh, to acknowledge that. And it was a very interesting, um, you know, set of uh, days we had there. Mm. Uh, we also talked about the power of technology, especially when it came to location-based advertising. Mm. Um, you know, today you're working with your mobile device. You are a walking location. Mm. Actually, you are a walking post yeah. office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And so, you know, when it comes yeah. to when it comes yeah. to engaging you as a consumer yeah. uh, from a location perspective, you know, the moment you pass Carrefour out mm. there mm. and you see the billboard of Nivea. And, and, and you know that soft, silky, smooth mm -hmm. model who's there, um, and 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 the fragrance that they are pushing, you know, in a way, when you enter the supermarket, your purchasing decision has been influenced. But then, what happens when you're in the store? Uh, you know, how is that gonna be changed in one way or another? And so we look at certain, uh, you know, parameters. Um, and M1 data also addresses mm. some of these things that you know we, we talked about at mm. at at, uh, at length during the ad week, and so it was a very good experience. And then obviously, uh, you know, celebrating our very own uh, yeah. the future is female. Future is female. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'd like to hear your experience as yeah. well there. Um, to be honest, when I got the email, because just send you an email and they say, look, you've been nominated, and if you can make it down to South Africa, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the summary of the email. <laughs> <laughs> so I discussed it with my husband, and I was like, I go, I'm a, and he's like, just go. 
Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I got on the plane very much thinking, look, I'm going to meet some phenomenal women. Yeah. The other nominees, I'm going to have a couple of drinks. You know, if the bank account allows, I'll do some shopping. And that yeah. was very much my headspace going in. So I think sitting in that room, and I think the photo that I actually posted on social has me sweating. Because uh-huh. I literally had a mouthful of food and they said my name. <laughs> and I stood up. <laughs> and I'm chewing, like this guy is trying to get it down as quickly yeah. as possible. And I get to the stage and I, I had absolutely not. I had no speech. I mean, it was just, honestly, in that moment, shocker. it just felt like God saying, I good feel mm. and good job. Nabado. Nabado. And many, <laughs> and many more to come. <laughs> super, super. And I, I just want us to go back a little bit to your journey because yeah. you said it's 10 years in the making. Oh, and yeah. you, you're saying that entrepreneurship can be for anyone. You know, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Mm. So just tell me you left that job. <laughs> tell me it. that thinking mm. process before you say, okay, <laughs> I have this vision. Yeah. I believe in it. Yeah. Tell, take us through that process because it's very inspiring. I mean, you have been a top 40 over fo- under 40. Fo- oh, over 40. Under, <laughs> under 40. 40. No, I know. Not over, <laughs> I know. Yes. I have to. <laughs> under 40 two times. Well, you have yeah. been top 25 CEOs. Yeah, twice mm-hmm. as well. I mean, and the list is endless. If yeah. I could start mm-hmm. now, we're going to take a long time. So mm-hmm. just tell us, for those who want to get into entrepreneurship and they're thinking, can I do it? Can yeah. I not do it? Mm-hmm. Just tell us that journey of yours, transitioning from the job, comfy, a check every <laughs> every, every month. month to, you know, <laughs> and the way you're saying, sometimes you're like, man, I have to wake up. I have to yeah. push myself. So it, it worked out. Like I said, this has just been a God journey for me, man, really. Mm. So I was in my job. I was pretty okay. Uh, I had a really big client who's going to show my age, Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> Nokia was my big client, okay, <laughs> at the time. And um, so at the time, Carat, which now evolved into Dentsu, won the Nokia business globally. And the client, and I just want to shout her out, Regina Karani, who's now at Wrigley, mm. incredible woman. Mm. So she pretty much just said, okay, I mean, I don't mind moving to this new agency as long as Samantha's there. And after that conversation, I was then approached by the CEO at the time. The CEO of Dentsu. Yeah, Yeah. CEO of Dentsu, who said, hey, do you want to start this thing? Because it's a really big client and we're willing to, we want to start, but can you do it? And me, I was like, yep. I know nothing about starting a business, <laughs> but like, yeah, I, yeah, I can do this, yeah. I can do this. And that was it. It wow. was literally, uh, the thought process was, I've been working on this client, right? I understand it in and out. I think I can do this. Mm. And, and you, Joel, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your journey. You have mentioned your family was in SMEs and mm. you've grown up in that setup and whatnot. Mm. You have been a top 25 mm. man in digital yes tell us about your journey and just yeah what it was like um my what was really interesting about my experience was i you know you can call it by divine intervention or whatever i got mentored by you know some of the world's leading uh top entrepreneurs mm-hmm. um and he happened to just see an African man in the room that was a dinner party and he approached me and told me, well, you don't look American, you don't look Latino, mm. what are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm, I'm a Kenyan. Mm. Oh, you run. Yeah. <laughs> that was, the that was the, what captivated our conversation yeah. from there. So yeah, actually, I can run. I'm sure anyone else can run, but I'm not a marathoner in that way. <laughs> but you know, what was really interesting about this experience for me was um, I learned a lot about, um, you know, just building teams, being empathetic, mm-hmm. um, you know, following your heart, but at the same time, reasoning out what's really happening within, uh, you know, your environs. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to join a telco that allowed me to grow my digital skills also when I was there. Um, and then I remember in one of my catch-up meetings with him, uh, it was Carlos Slim. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's Carlos Slim. Yeah, yeah, it was Carlos Slim. Um, very incredible man, top entrepreneur. He called me aside and told me, 
you know, you've done so much for Latin America. What have you done about home? Mm -hmm. What have you contributed to where you were brought up, where your heritage is? Mm -hmm. And that question really, you know, shook me to my core because I, it was very clear the progress that we had made. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I made the faith decision <laughs> to book my flight home mm -hmm. without any job yeah. prepositions, without any um, understanding of where I'm going to end up, mm -hmm. and just saying, I'm going home and I'm going to do something about my home. Well, I think you've talked a little bit about what Densu is doing, but tell us a little bit more about the future. What can we expect from Densu? going forward? I think <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> no, I'm really trying to cut down. Um, look, we are young, yeah. we are ambitious, mm -hmm. we are hungry. Um, and we are hungry for change. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we have committed to um, is really partnering, nurturing, involving um, creators within the create, creative economy mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that. We are really working with our brands to actually see this coming to life. Um, most of the acquisitions that we have made as a company, um, most of the talent that we have brought in, uh, most of the campaigns that we've been able to develop have had this at the center of what we're doing. Um, you know, international brands like Netflix have come into the market and, you know, listened to us and, you know, launched in the way they launched in the market, you know, with a creator economy mm -hmm. first approach um, and, you know, putting to the, uh, you know, putting on the map, um, you know, children who have been creating content in the slums and mm -hmm. all that. And it's, it's, it was phenomenal stories that we've been able to tell. Um, one thing that we are very cognizant about is culture is created mm -hmm. um, and we are looking at some of those shapers of culture to work with us and as Samantha put, uh, put it out earlier on, we worked with close to 3,000 uh, influencers, creators within the country to be able to, to do work for brands that is meaningful, that drives meaningful change in society at the end of the day. That's one. The second thing I think that's, you know, very close to, um, to our heart is being that force for good. And under force for good, um, within Densu, there are certain aspects that we are looking at. We're looking at, um, you know, the climate change action that everyone is focusing on. Um, and I'll let Samantha talk a bit about that, um, to look at the transformation, the digital transformational agenda that we talked about earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we have been uh, named as e-commerce agency of the year four years in a row. Um, and hopefully this year, work with some of our clients will actually feature, um, you know, in this year's round. Uh, we are the most awarded agency digitally and creatively and, and media has also played a very big role in that um, and so when I think about that customer experience evolution because of the transformational agenda that you know brands and SMEs would embark on um, we strongly strongly believe that we are going to be playing a very big role uh, in, in that space um, and one of the things that you know we have been looking at doing is you know getting children from or not children, uh, adults <laughs> from universities, um, kids from universities to actually come in, uh, be trained on some of the global best case practices mm -hmm. uh, in partnership with companies like Salesforce, Amazon, mm -hmm. getting that mindset mm -hmm. in and then reinvesting that back into our economy. What you can expect from Dentsu in the future is committed, commitment to kindness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's commitment to Kenyans in that we will partner with our brands to make sure that we are helping develop products that actually meet their needs. So the commitment to Kenyans is from that perspective in that we really are committed to working with our brands to create products that actually meet your needs. Mm. Not just something you use today, done tomorrow, really creating just making your lives easier. Mm. I do think that's why we're here. Mm. You can expect more, more of that. Of that. Mm. 
mm. from how we partner with our clients, from how we engage with our employees, our over 170 70. employees that we work with every day. I, I think. still can't believe it. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> sitting here, I'm like 170. How, yeah. Yeah. how do we make yeah. lives better for yeah. you and for each other in terms yeah. of our own internal company culture? Mm. And then just the world around us in mm. our little corner. Mm. Um, how are we making the Kenyan world better? Mm. Um, mm. So I think... In a nutshell, that's that's, that's what, what I would say is. about Tensu. Yeah. Yeah. That's been very informative indeed. So as we close, uh, I think we've gotten so much information, <laughs> the digital transformation, creative economy, yeah. and doing good, yes. uh, not just bottom line. Yeah, force for good. Very important thing. So maybe in closing, uh, is there anything that you'd like to add? Hmm. Ladies first. You see. Um, <laughs> I told you I'm a gentleman. I, <laughs> I think um, this is a parting shot. Huh? Mm. I think everything that we've managed to accomplish for as a business and as far as we have to go, I mean, we were here to talk about M1 and the power of data and what mm. it can do. Um, what I would say, and again, just going back to entrepreneurs and people really trying, because I think you have to have your head in the sand not to see mm, where, yeah. how life is at the moment, you know, <laughs> cost of living. I mean, it, it's not an easy time. So what I would say is, and I think I'll speak for women, just go where your voice is heard, mm. you know, because it's one thing to, you know, be somewhere and to try and influence that. And you're sort of trying to turn the Titanic, mm. you know. <laughs> versus going into spaces that might not be this big, glamorous show, but your voice is actually heard mm. and you're able to actually influence and change things and be a change agent in that environment. Yep. Wow. Um, my parting shot would be, I was once told that um, there's a reason why a lighthouse is where it is mm. it's to help steer ships away from from the cliffs, cliffs yeah. right and more often than not when a lighthouse shines the light it will do it in a circular motion it mm. never shines the light at one place mm. I, I want to believe that we are that beacon uh, not just as a business but as individuals um, we help businesses steer away from, uh, from, uh, from some of the, the things that would be detrimental to them. Uh, help them, you know, keep with culture. At the end of the day... And what, to your point, Joel, sorry. Yeah. In a lot of our reviews, that's what, over the past that's, four years, yeah. a lot of our clients say we wouldn't have made it through this period. If it wasn't, yeah, exactly. So that's a really nice analogy. That, yeah, I've heard him say that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I'm saying that is because the light will shine in a circular motion. Mm -hmm. And I think when the light shines on you at that particular point in time, for every entrepreneur that's out there, mm -hmm. the data has been released now. Mm -hmm. It's a light shining on you, telling you this is what is happening within this space. Okay. Um, act on it what decisions are you gonna make when the light is shining on you and that's how we see the data set that came out but on a more personal note um okay you should shout out eva as well eva yeah <laughs> head of data eva Muita, yeah, well done well done, well done. spearheaded the entire data set <laughs> well done eva um one thing that i would say from a personal level being a father to four daughters has given me a lot of insight mm -hmm. uh, being a husband um, running a business from scratch mm -hmm. um, growing it to where it is right now has been a phenomenal experience the way you think as a man um, is who you are mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. biblical yes in a way as you think. yeah so you are yeah. um, and that mentality i think is something that people need to to understand that it's in them, they have everything in them to succeed. Um, and it's important for us to appreciate where we are and strive for the best, you know, moving forward. But it will all start with our own mental 
uh, mindsets. Awesome. I, I think I don't even want to add anything <laughs> to, to those. Huh? It starts with the mind and it's yeah. all about the mindset and going where your voice is heard, mm -hmm. where you're appreciated, not tolerated. <laughs> so this awesome, awesome. This has been a very interesting and engaging conversation, the creative economy, digital transformation. And we thank you so much for your insights. <laughs> thank thank you. you for having us. That has been a Citizen Digital exclusive on digital transformation and people-led marketing. Thank you for your time and have a good evening.